Okay, during that short break, I was able to find some new carburetor bowl assemblies. I knew I'd ordered some last week because I just had a customer come in here with uh, six warped ones, and we usually keep six in stock. Used those up and uh, ordered some new ones, and they just hadn't been put in stock yet. So, this is still our carburetor number five. I had uh, kind of assembled everything just so I didn't... Uh, I didn't lose track of stuff. It's a lot easier just to keep stuff put together. And you, that way, you, you know, won't lose track of it. Where everything goes, especially when you get into, you know, 180 parts that goes into all this stuff. Okay. Again, we drop our jet into place and we rotate it counterclockwise. You'll feel it seat. It'll just drop down into a spot like it's supposed to be there. But that's where it's supposed to be there. Gently install our jet. Jet's installed. We have our carburetor bowl plug, drain plug. Install that again, just snug. You don't have to make these tight. I had already, I had, in the interest of keeping this all in one assembly and in the interest of protecting the lower portion of my carburetor body, I put this on there. I didn't know it might be a couple of days before I got back to this, however, same day. So, all a good thing. Okay, this is the carburetor body. We're going to throw that in the trash. So when we're putting on there, double check, make sure everything's in there. Nozzle well gasket, uh, body gasket, float. Needle, everything's in there correctly. Put all of our screws into place. Start each one of them by turning backwards. Seats, get it started. Backwards, give it a seat, go back. Backwards, the seats. Go in, backwards, there we go. Sometimes they're not so uh, eager to jump in there as others. Okay, now we're just going to make contact with each one of these. Just contact. This is important the way this is done. Do not apply any force at all. You just want the... Uh, Screw, head of the screw to make contact with the bowl. Okay. Now, this gasket has a tendency to want to slide out and jump out. What I'll do over here, I'll put my thumb on there and I'll press on it. I will lightly, very lightly, snug that corner up to where I can't see any air in there. I'll do the same thing here, just very lightly. Because if you put any torque on it, when you go to torque this side, this side's going to be over torqued. So you've got to you've got to equally torque it. You can't tighten one side and then tighten the other side. It just uh, it will not uh, it will not um, assemble true like that again. So I got a little air gap in here. This side, the, the curved side, is not so bad as wanting to jump out as that straight side. But usually you don't have to hold that into place. Close your air gap up there. Close your air gap up here. Okay. Now you've got all those gaps closed. You want to go back and put an eighth of a turn. There you go. In between a sixteenth and an eighth. Well, oh, yeah, very awesome. little torque on this. If you see this gasket start to bulge out, you know you've gone too far with it. This gasket right here, as I tightened that, it wanted to curve down a little bit. So I know it went a little bit too far. As I loosen, it'll straighten back out. The reason you do not need to tighten these too much is the, the, the plastic body of this carburetor acts as if it's a thread locking agent in itself. These will not back out. When you're assembling a metal body, aluminum body carburetor, 
always put a, a, a Loctite on there, a, like a Loctite Blue, which is a medium strength Loctite. That way you don't have to, you don't over tighten those screws either and you're not concerned about them backing out in the future. That Loctite will hold them into place at a lower torque value and everything will be fine. One thing, uh, when we were talking throttle bodies earlier, I've mentioned how we, um, how we turn the idle screws in to count, count the number of turns in. And that way we know once the screw is seated in there, the idle screw, we know how many screw, how many turns it takes to come back out. And um, that's the same method we use when we're doing an aluminum body carburetor. We turn the idle screw all the way in and then we back it back out as, as many turns as we screwed it in. Once you go to put it back in, you seat it and then you make that many turns back out. Count your turns in, pull it out. Clean your carburetor, push it all the way back in, count the turns back out. Same number of turns as when you did in the first place. Okay, I'm going to get to cleaning the throttle bodies now. I'm going to finish the with the rest of these carburetors. I'm going to get to cleaning these throttle bodies. Once those are uh, all cleaned up, very simple, um, very simple reassembly on that. We'll get that done, and then uh, we're going to have some more fun.